Every year, a new crop of true story movies and biopics hit theaters. In this video, I'm going to reveal 20 true story movies coming in 2020. First up is Just Mercy, starring Jamie Foxx and Michael B. Jordan. Jamie Foxx portrays Walter McMillan, a black man who is wrongfully accused of the 1986 murder of an 18-year-old white woman. Despite a solid alibi and a lack of evidence, McMillan ends up on death row. Enter Michael B. Jordan as attorney Brian Stevenson, who fights to get McMillan off death row. Brie Larson's character, Eva Ansley, assists Brian Stevenson in his efforts. If you want to learn more about the true story behind Just Mercy and how it compares to the film, check out our article over on historyvershollywood.com that's linked in the description below. Also arriving on January 10th is Three Christs, which tells the story of three paranoid schizophrenics who each believe they are Jesus Christ. In the film, Peter Dinklage, Walton Goggins, and Bradley Whitford portray the three men, and Richard Gere portrays the doctor who treats them. The film is based on the book The Three Christs of Ypsilanti by Milton Rokiak. Rounding out January is The Last Full Measure, starring Warhorse's Jeremy Irvine as Air Force pararescueman William H. Pitsenbarger. On his day off, Pitsenbarger volunteers to board a helicopter and extract the wounded from the 1966 Vietnam Battle of Za Cam Mi. After helping to hoist several of the wounded up into the helicopters, Pitsenbarger decides to wave off his ride out, instead choosing to remain on the ground to help the wounded and fight alongside the men. Pitsenbarger displays one of the finest examples of heroism in combat before taking enemy fire, which eventually kills him. Flash forward 30 years later, and Pitsenbarger still hasn't received the Medal of Honor for his actions. Captain America Winter Soldier Sebastian Stan portrays the Pentagon staffer who fights to get Pitsenbarger the recognition he deserves. Our research into the historical accuracy of this film and any of the others we've covered is linked in the description below. February brings us the movie Burden, starring Forrest Whitaker and Garrett Hedlund. Hedlund rose to stardom for his portrayal of Sam Flynn in 2010's Tron Legacy. In this film, he portrays Mike Burden, a man who is basically raised by the Ku Klux Klan. His viewpoints begin to change after he falls in love with a woman named Judy, portrayed by Andrea Riseborough. Further helping him to break free of the Klan's clutches is a black reverend named David Kennedy, portrayed by Forrest Whitaker. The movie is based on the book of the same name by Courtney Hargrave. The movie shares a very similar theme to 2019's Skin starring Jamie Bell, and to some degree the Best of Enemies starring Taraji P. Henson and Sam Rockwell. Both of those movies were also based on true stories and that research can be found on historyvershollywood.com. Ah, March, the month of St. Patrick, and a few more true story movies. First in March is I Still Believe, starring Riverdale's K.J. Appa and Britt Robertson, who you might remember from Under the Dome and Tomorrowland. Appa portrays singer-songwriter Jeremy Camp, and the film focuses on his relationship with his first wife, Melissa Henning, portrayed by Robertson. During their relationship, Henning is diagnosed with a terminal illness, and the film tells the story of how they manage to find strength in the face of impossible odds. I Still Believe is directed by the Irwin brothers, who also directed 2018's I Can Only Imagine. That film also explored events in the life of a singer-songwriter, Mercy Me's lead singer, Bart Millard. Next up in March is Escape from Pretoria, starring Harry Potter, I mean Daniel Radcliffe. Come on, Daniel, with the beard, the long hair, the glasses, you could almost pass for a muggle. In Escape from Pretoria, Daniel Radcliffe portrays Tim Jenkin, an anti-apartheid activist who becomes a political prisoner in South Africa. Along with several other inmates, Jenkin hatches a plot to break out of Pretoria Central Prison in 1979. The film is based on the 2003 book that the real Tim Jenkin wrote about his experience, titled Inside Out, Escape from Pretoria Central Prison. Toward the end of March comes the British drama Military Wives, which tells the story of a group of women on the home front who form a choir in order to help deal with the stress of their significant others being away at war. The movie stars Kristen Scott Thomas and Sharon Horgan. You might remember Horgan from the recent Amazon comedy series Catastrophe. Initially seeing themselves as a bit of a joke, the Military Wives soon become inspirations 
and find themselves at the heart of a media sensation. The inspirational true story deploys in U.S. theaters on March 27th. Also at the end of March is Resistance, starring Jesse Eisenberg, Ed Harris, and Edgar Ramirez. Eisenberg portrays French mime Marcel Marceau during his days as a member of the French Resistance during World War II. The real-life Marceau, along with his brother Alain, reportedly helped save numerous children from the concentration camps. Interestingly, Ed Harris will portray General George S. Patton in the film. Marceau, who fluently spoke English, French, and German, worked as a liaison officer with Patton's Third Army. Marcel Marceau's first major performance was a bit of a celebration following the liberation of Paris in August 1944. It was then that he performed before 3,000 troops. Coming to Netflix on April 17th is the biopic Sergio about the United Nations diplomat Sergio Vieira de Mello. The film stars Wagner Mora, who gained fame portraying Pablo Escobar in the Netflix series Narcos. Sergio takes place in the chaos following the U.S. invasion of Iraq. Vieira de Mello was working as a United Nations special representative for Iraq, pushing for peace in the region when he became a victim in the Canal Hotel bombing, which is where the UN had its headquarters in Iraq. On May 1st, Dream Horse gallops, or I should say races, into theaters. The film stars Tony Collette and Damien Lewis. Colette portrays John Vokes, a Welsh barmaid who persuades her customers to pitch in and become part owners of a racehorse. Knowing nothing about raising or racing horses, Vokes recruits her husband and a group of others to help train and prepare the horse for competition. Will the commoner, Vokes, succeed against the ire of others in the sport? If you can't wait to learn how this inspirational true story ends, you can always find out by watching the 2015 documentary, Dark Horse, which deals with the subject. Also arriving on May 1st is Stardust, starring Johnny Flynn as David Bowie. Johnny Flynn previously starred in the 2017 crime thriller Beast, and he can be seen at the end of February in Emma, based on the Jane Austen novel. Stardust is set in 1971 and follows a 24-year-old David Bowie on his first trip to America. It was during that trip that the singer-songwriter discovered his alter ego, Ziggy Stardust. Accompanying Bowie on the journey is his struggling publicist, Ron Oberman, portrayed by Mark Moran. Jenna Malone portrays the late singer-songwriter's first wife, Angie Barnett. A week later, on May 8th, the World War II naval thriller Greyhound comes into port. The film stars Tom Hanks as the fictional naval commander Ernest Krauss, who after years of being a career officer is finally given command of a destroyer, the USS Keeling. Now before you World War II buffs call me out, Greyhound is not based on a true story. It's based on the novel The Good Shepherd by C.S. Forrester. The ship in the film, the USS Keeling, whose radio codename is Greyhound, was not an actual Navy destroyer. However, the film is certainly rooted in history. It takes place at the midpoint of World War II during the Battle of the Atlantic. In the film, Hanks as the skipper must lead a convoy of Allied ships as they're being stalked by German U-boats. A large portion of Greyhound was shot aboard the USS Kidd, a Fletcher-class Navy destroyer. If you've ever been to Baton Rouge, Louisiana, you might have toured the USS Kidd. It's been parked there for years and has served as a tourist attraction. Next, we sail into mid-August for the release of Disney's The One and Only Ivan. The movie is based on the fictional children's novel by Catherine Applegate. It tells the story of a gorilla named Ivan and an elephant named Stella who are on display at the Exit 8 Big Top Mall and Viddy Arcade with no idea how they ended up there. Actor Sam Rockwell is the voice of Ivan while Angelina Jolie brings life to Stella. Brian Cranston portrays Mac, who's the owner of the Big Top Mall. The inspiration for the children's novel, and in turn the film, was a real-life gorilla named Ivan, who was born in 1962. Ivan was captured in the wild as a baby, and was raised by humans until it became too dangerous. At that point, Ivan was moved to a 40 by 40 foot concrete enclosure on display to the public at the B&I Shopping Center in Tacoma, Washington. Tragically, this is where Ivan would spend the next 20 seven years of his life. Local animal welfare organizations campaigned for Ivan's release and finally in 1994 he was gifted to the Woodland Park Zoo in Seattle. A short time later Ivan was loaned to Zoo Atlanta in Atlanta, Georgia. 
Creeping into theaters on September 11th, 2020 is the horror movie The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It. This is the third installment of the main Conjuring films, which began in 2013, and it's the eighth installment of the entire Conjuring universe, which includes other films like Annabelle and The Nun. In this Conjuring sequel, actors Patrick Wilson and Vera Farmiga return as real-life paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren. The Conjuring The Devil Made Me Do It was inspired by the real-life trial of Arne Cheyenne Johnson. It was also referred to as The Devil Made Me Do It case, hence the film's title. In 1981, Johnson was convicted of first-degree murder for the killing of his landlord, Alan Bono. At his trial, Johnson claimed that he was possessed by a demon at the time, and it was the demon that made him kill Bono. As if things couldn't get stranger, Johnson's fiance's family then came forward and said that their 11-year-old son, David Glatzel, had played host to the demon that had forced Johnson to kill Bono. The family had enlisted the help of Ed and Lorraine Warren to get the demon out of their son. The Warrens brought in several Catholic priests who helped them exorcise the demon, at which time it left the body of David Glatzel and went into the body of Arne Cheyenne Johnson. Several months later, Johnson got into the heated argument with his landlord and committed the murder. This was the first known court case in the United States where the defense had sought to prove innocence based on a claim of demonic possession. The judge in the case wasn't buying it and ruled that such a defense could never be proven and was therefore infeasible in a court of law. Arne Cheyenne Johnson was convicted and served five years of a 10 to 20 year sentence. Expected to go into wide release on October 2nd, 2020 is the ensemble political crime drama, The Trial of the Chicago Seven. The film was written and directed by Aaron Sorkin, who also wrote the screenplays for a number of other true story movies, including Molly's Game, Steve Jobs, Moneyball, The Social Network, and Charlie Wilson's War. The Trial of the Chicago Seven tells the story of seven men who went on trial for inciting riots in the vicinity of the 1968 Democratic National Convention in Chicago. The men were primarily protesting then-President Lyndon B. Johnson's policies surrounding the Vietnam War. Basically, the protesters were told that they could hold a rally in an isolated area far away from the convention. However, they decided to march toward the amphitheater where the convention was being held, and on the way they clashed with police, resulting in hundreds of police and protesters being injured. The Trial of the Chicago 7 stars a bit of an ensemble cast that includes Eddie Redmayne, Sasha Baron Cohen, John Carroll Lynch, Mark Rylance, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, and Michael Keaton. Debuting in theaters in early October is the Aretha Franklin biopic Respect, otherwise known as R-E-S-P-E-C-T. The film stars Jennifer Hudson as the singer-songwriter who became known as the Queen of Soul. As of right now, this is probably the first film to really kick off the 2020 Oscar season. And on an interesting side note, Prior to Aretha Franklin's passing in 2018, she had said that she wanted Jennifer Hudson to portray her in a biopic. Franklin herself had actually been involved in the movie's production up until her death. The film also stars Forrest Whitaker as Aretha Franklin's father, C.L. Franklin, and Mary J. Blige as 50s singer Dinah Washington. Toward the end of November is another film that will likely take a swing at an Oscar, and that is King Richard starring Will Smith. No, Will Smith is not portraying the 12th century King of England. He's portraying the father of tennis superstars Venus and Serena Williams. Richard Williams began giving his daughters tennis lessons when they were just four and a half years old. This was after he wrote up a 78-page plan on how they would become tennis superstars. Richard coached his daughters off and on throughout their careers, and he later became known for some of his courtside antics. After Venus Williams beat Lindsay Davenport to win the 2000 Wimbledon title, Richard Williams could be heard shouting, Straight out of Compton! as a reference to the NWA song in the area of Los Angeles where the family once resided. He then jumped over the NBC broadcasting booth and performed a triumphant dance to celebrate his daughter's victory. Ultimately, Richard Williams felt that his daughters had never been truly accepted by the sport, which had previously been mainly dominated by white women. King Richard also stars John Bernthal of The Walking Dead in Netflix's The Punisher. Bernthal will portray Rick Macy, 
who coached the Williams sisters from the early to mid-1990s. A true story movie arriving on Christmas Day is The Last Duel, directed by Ridley Scott from a screenplay written in part by Ben Affleck and Matt Damon. The film focuses on a trial by combat that was fought in Paris in December 1386. As the story goes, when the knight Jean de Carouge, portrayed by Matt Damon, was away in Paris on business, his squire, Jacques Legree, portrayed by Adam Driver, raped his wife Marguerite. Marguerite, who's portrayed by Jodie Comer, made the accusation, but Legree denied the claim. After it was determined that guilt could not be decided through a standard jury trial, a duel was then ordered. Now what's interesting about a trial by combat is that not only are the stakes high for the two people involved, because one of them is going to end up dead, is that it's also high for Marguerite, the wife of Jean de Carouge, because if she's making an accusation and Carouge loses the duel, then her accusation is deemed false. And for making a false accusation, she's also put to death. Now, if you want to spoil it for yourself and find out who wins the trial by combat, the knight portrayed by Matt Damon or the squire portrayed by Adam Driver, you can pick up a copy of Eric Yeager's 2004 book, The Last Duel, which was the inspiration for the film. There are several other true story movies that don't have release dates yet. Two of those films we are fairly certain are coming in 2020. First up is Mank, directed by David Fincher and expected to arrive on Netflix in either summer or fall 2020. Mank tells the story of Herman J. Mankiewicz and his battles with director Orson Welles over screenplay credit for the 1941 film Citizen Kane. In addition to Citizen Kane, Mankiewicz worked on a number of notable screenplays in that era. They included The Wizard of Oz, Man of the World, Dinner at Eight, Pride of the Yankees, and The Pride of St. Louis. Gary Oldman will portray Mankiewicz in the film, which is a rather personal project for director David Fincher. His late father, Jack Fincher, actually wrote the screenplay for the film. The second highly anticipated true story movie without a release date yet is Ron Howard's Hillbilly Elegy. The film, which is expected to stream on Netflix by the end of the year, is based on the New York Times best-selling memoir by J.D. Vance. Vance grew up in poverty in a small town in Ohio, and in his book, he attempts to blame his family's apple values for their social and economic struggles. Vance would eventually go on to rise above the confines of his upbringing and become a venture capitalist. The movie stars the big C's Gabriel Basso as J.D. Vance and Amy Adams will portray his mother Bev. That concludes our rundown of 20 true story movies coming in 2020. To follow our research into these films, hit that subscribe button on YouTube and head on over to History vs. Hollywood Dot com. Anchors away, my friends. Hey.